Nobody goes to the shop to buy a bread nylon without bread inside. The value of the nylon is in the content it is carrying. That means the value of the container is determined by the content. If you and I will be valuable vessels, we must be prayerful vessels. We must be filled with prayers. Amplified by fasting. That is why all through the scriptures, the description of the believer's prayer life is ceaseless in nature. It said in 1 Thessalonians 5.17, Pray without ceasing. In Luke 18, 1, men ought always to pray and not to faint. In Romans 12, 12, continue instant in prayer. Our lives are to be filled with prayer and then amplified by fasting. That is why when Jesus spoke of prayer and fasting, he didn't say if you pray or if you fast. He said, when thou prayest, Matthew chapter 6 verse 6, and verse 17 and 18 of the same chapter, he said, when thou fastest, so fasting and prayer is a natural part of Christian living. We are designed for prayer. We are designed for prayer. I pray this afternoon that a fresh prayer grace will come upon our lives. But it's important to know what we must pray so as to ensure the prayer fountain in our lives don't dry up. And in the book of Matthew chapter 6, where Jesus gave us the prayer pattern, among other things, there are two very instructive things he said. Verse 9 down to verse 13. He said, after this man I pray, our father, who art in heaven? Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. The first emphasis of the prayer altar is the advancement of the kingdom of God. Why is this so important? There are too many prayer subjects under the kingdom. They are inexhaustible in nature. So if we are focused on the kingdom, we will be ceaseless in our prayers. You are praying for the growth of the church. You are praying for the salvation of the lost. You are praying for the blessing of members. You are praying for the utterance of the pastors. You are praying for the continuous defense of God's people. These are all kingdom subjects. Inexhaustible in nature. When a man begins to pray, bless me, bless me. Very soon the prayer virtue will run out. But when the believer begins to pray for the advancement of the kingdom, his prayer life continues to get buoyant. I pray for each one of us today that the grace to remain constant in the advancement of the kingdom on the altar of prayer may that grace be granted to us 
I said, may that grace be granted to us. Number two is we must continue to pray and crave to please God. In that same scripture, Matthew chapter 6, after talking about praying for the kingdom, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He said, give us this day our daily bread and look at verse 12 he said and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors how does he conclude lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil a crave to please God please hear this today we live in an increasingly corrupt world unthinkable corruptions in first Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 and verse 2 he said now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the later times some will depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils speaking lies in hypocrisy having their conscience seared with a hot iron these are the realities of the last days seducing spirits where individuals will begin to accept things as true that are contrary to the word of God. Seducing spirits. We live in an increasingly corrupt world. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3 the word of God says let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there be first a falling away and the man of sin be revealed so there will be falling away way of many. And that is why it is vital for us to pray so as not to fall into temptation. Jesus said, Matthew 26, 41, he said, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. We live in an increasingly corrupt world where Christians will begin to do things that are unthinkable unimaginable because they have given heed to seducing spirits where somebody will look at somebody else's husband and claim that God told them that that is the husband seducing spirits that is the world we live in now. And that is why there is a need to pray. Because not only are people hearing the voice of the shepherd, some are hearing the voice of the stranger. Giving heed to doctrines of devils. But I pray today that for each one of us, as our prayer altar is ignited, we shall be delivered from temptation. Somebody believe it, say loud amen.